Welcome to Bahrain Ties Me. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, the straw idea that I had. Uh, I'm calling it for now an eco zoo. Uh, so in this presentation, I will first talk about uh, a Lion Wildlife Park and Reserve and Hua Island. And then I will connect them with what this is, which is ecotourism. And then I'll introduce my idea and uh, mention the pros and cons of it. So first uh, I'll talk about Alarian uh, Wildlife Park. Um, I'm sure like you at least know about it and know what their goal is and what do they do. And it's basically a place where they they conserve animals and try to pr uh, protect them and uh, it's basically to save uh, or protect uh, endangered animals. And I quoted uh, their goal, which is protection and development of wildlife and conservation of natural heritage uh, of Bahrain. And everything they do is, er, revolves around that. Um, uh, they opened in the 70s and the area is seven kilometers square, uh, the land area. Uh, they have many endangered animals, like over 100 species, and uh, it is a, a huge attraction uh, sp uh, site in Bahrain. Like um, even a school, like all um, school um, trips are basically to Alarian Park to, for educational purposes, to uh, show the impact of um, the environment and animals and how important it is to uh, save them. And um, a few days ago, I paid a visit to Alarian Park to uh, look at the animals as well and to learn more about them. And I noticed that most of the animals, um, like uh, their, their, um, their origin is areas where they have similar weather and uh, like uh, similar conditions to Bahrain. So it's not like we're endangering them or exposing them to heat they, that they can't tolerate. Um, it's just these two animals that uh, they looked overheated. So I looked more about them. A hyena can tolerate heat, but she looked a bit uh, overheated there and uh, the cockatoo can can't really tolerate heat. So like out of all the species, like these only two that probably needed a better conditions. But in general, a Larian park is uh, like they, they, they are working on their goal and it's a really, a really good um, a project. Uh, but there are a few things that we could do to make it better for, for the people and for the animals. Um, as you can see, like, the, the hyena is just panting there and trying to hide in shade. It's, it was really hot that day, so it needed more care. And uh, for for the birds, uh, like they were overpopulated. Like no matter uh, how much we want to help animals, keeping them in cages is just not a solution. Like especially birds, because they need early open area. As you can see, there are many birds in just one cage. Um, now I'm going, I'm going to talk about Hua Island. Hua Island have this, uh, a similar goal. Um, Hua uh, consists of multiple islands. It's a bigger area. Uh, as you can see here, Hua is the main island and there are multiple uh, islands around it. Here are more information about it. It's only 20 kilometers away from Bahrain, from Bahrain. So it's like a 45 to 50 minutes trip by boat. So it's not that far. Um, it consists of 36 islands and it's actually 16 mainly, but they say 36 because there are piles of sand, like they're really tiny. So I don't think they actually consider an island. So the actual ones are just 16. And uh, the land area is about 52 kilometers, Hua Island being uh, making up 41 kilometer out of it. So th that's why it's called Hua Islands because it's the biggest one. Uh, uh, all, all the islands, we can't really uh, visit them. They're severely restricted, uh, except the main island, which is Hua. And uh, we, it's not for um, 
uh, inhabiting or people can't actually live there. It's just, there's just one hotel there and there are uh, some police and like a military um, area. Um, Hwar uh, is a wildlife reserve like Larin and uh, no one is allowed to hunt them. They're protected by law. And these are the main animals that are found there. We have the Socorta cormorant. I hope that's how it's pronounced. And it's super interesting that uh, in one of the mainlands of Hwar, uh, there are about 30,000 of these species. And uh, it makes up 20% of the whole world population of these species. We have the Arabian oryx, which, are, which is found as well in um, El Arim Park. There is sand gazelle, and we have the, the dugong. Um, so just from mentioning this these stuff about the two places, you can see that their goals is the same, which is protecting the wildlife and preserving it. So my idea is just, why don't we combine the two? Why don't we make them work together for the same goal? Um, so my idea is, uh, oh, oh yes, sorry. I mentioned also the definition of ecotourism, uh, which is just connecting them together. Um, uh, ecotourism is when we visit the natural areas that conserve the environment. And these two are basically um, an example of the ecotourism in Bahrain uh, for educational purposes as well. Okay, so my idea, I called it EcoZoo because it focuses both on the eco part and zoo, I called it zoo because we will be visiting it and using it for financial benefits as well. So what the project could be uh, that we use Hawar Island, the mainland. Uh, as you can see, this, uh, this is a clearer picture of the other mainlands. Uh, the Suad al Janabiya is where um, the, the species I told you about, which makes up 20% of the world population of it lives there. And um, we, we could, let's say we will make the eco zoo in the mainland, Hwar, which is about 41 kilometers square, which is pretty huge compared to Larin Park. Larin was seven uh, kilometers squares. So first to make it inhabit inhabitable, we need to supply it with water. We need to uh, put some plants there, make it green and um, thankfully like most of the animals that lives in our environment are actually herbivore or omnivore so plants are sufficient for them to survive uh, and they want to be feeding on each other so we're serving them uh, without cages and the next step when everything is um, properly made and uh, the, the land is inhabitable, we could start moving the animals. Uh, of course, this would need research and planning. We could, it could be like selective. They could s select few animals. They could move them all. I I'm not an expert, an expert in this. So of course, like if, if this will be implemented, it would need further studies. And they could leave the animals there till they're comfortable and they would uh, rep uh, repopulate there, they would reproduce and their population would increase in a better environment. And when they reach, uh, that, when we reach that level, we could supply them with researchers, with uh, the veterinarians where they would supervise them and take care of them. And now th that's the eco part. Now, how would we financially benefit from it? We could uh, arrange uh, boat trips there, which as we said, it's not that far away. And uh, uh, there could be a specialist who would guide people there and it would be kind of like um, a safari trips there. And uh, it would be completely safe for the animals because uh, we could uh, like arrange areas where they're restricted and there will be specialists who would keep supervising them to ensure that we are not disturbing the animals. Um, so the benefits of this, we have economical, visit, uh, economical uh, benefits and we have environmental uh, benefits, of course. The economical would be, it would be something new in Bahrain. It's one, like 
it won't be like the usual stuff we have. It would be something that would attract not only foreigners, but even locals. And people would enjoy to have a closer um, interaction with the animals. Um, and it would also attract the tourists if they want to know more about the, uh, the Arabian uh, animals that live here, um, to, more, to know more about the culture. We, we will, uh, we will um, plant, uh, like we will make it a green land. So we could plant uh, things that uh, s like symbolize Bahrain there as well, like palm trees. So it will be an, like an attraction uh, land. Uh, it will give a new opportunity for locals who would want to major in different things. We, we know that we struggle with like finding job opportunities here or majors that like we can't really major something that doesn't have a job offer here. So this will be like a new opportunity for you to major into agriculture research or veterinary and not be afraid that they won't have a future with their jobs. So of course it would um, like allow them to have new job opportunities. And environmentally, oh, sorry. Environmentally, the animals will be held uh, captor free. They won't be in cages, they will be free in a much bigger area. Uh, their serve area in Al Arin actually is not seven kilometers, it's four kilometers. The park is the rest of the three kilometers. Uh, so instead of four, it would be 41 kilometers square if we're just including just the mainland. Um, it will be a growth in the uh, agriculture in Bahrain. It would enhance the native animals, the, the culture. Uh, it, it would be a good educational uh, and environmental impact. If people will visit, they would know how beautiful just the environment is and they would appreciate it more. I would want to help it and support these kind of projects. Um, and of course, it would support the sustainable development goals of 2030. It would support at least two of them. Um, it could support uh, goal 13, which is the climate change, and goal 15, which is the life of, on the land. Um, of course, it would help. Uh, it would help the environment and. Uh, the economic, uh, like in the, uh, it would give us financial benefits on a longer term, but uh, it would require a lot of effort and uh, patient work on a project like this if it gets ever implemented. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's it. That, that was my idea. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Excellent presentation, Mariam, and your ideas. I'm sure uh, when we put online, uh, the authorities are going to say an excellent, excellent. Um, being a young person, we really appreciate that how you think, uh, and especially the animals also have their rights. So this is one of the things that we as a human being always think and very selfish in this regard that we cut trees, we don't put water, like uh, if you just name it, we have so many things. So we will try to send you a message across to, uh, there is a gentleman with us from uh, Supreme Council, from environmental, uh, Mr. Mohammed, he's there. So I will try to send it across to the chief and I'm sure they will really appreciate what you said and uh, it's all recorded and uh, we really appreciate Bina. From my side, it's a big clap. Thank you. Abila, you want to say anything? Yeah, thank you very much, Mariam. It's a great idea, but uh, it is good that they can create there in a state of shifting because it will be a lot of uh, cost for the place here and they can mm -hmm. create another one there. The True. idea is very good. Very good the idea. It's good that uh, they will reach it to the higher people, inshallah, in future. They can plan and research and make financially ready for it. Because if you say they can shift and close, it will be a lot of cost. But the idea is good. Yes, you are right. They need an, a better uh, environment for the animals. Very great. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Sister uh, Mariam, for this uh, presentation. Uh, I think there is there was an article about this uh, Huar Island from the governor, uh, north or south, 
to post and support, you know, the tourism there. Mm -hmm. Anybody uh, read this article? The GDN. Uh, one one yes, month ago. I, I recall this was uh, some time back uh, before Corona started because mm. uh, they at this time they were kind of re, uh, reactivating the, the hotel. Uh, yes. I, I was there like also maybe two and a half or three years back when the hotel just actually reopened and then they want to start something and uh, we did as well a kind of... Uh, tour with the guides uh, in the area where usually usually you're not allowed to enter because it's like restricted area of the the, the military so but as Mariam proposed uh, very good it is like it can be the sanctuary and then there can be guided tours so uh, actually also we will check with the BTA with the Bahrain Tourism Exhibition Authority because as per my understanding they are a kind of a uh, yeah, patron or uh, the supervisor of this area as well, along with the uh, uh, BDF, I guess. Yeah, definitely. We will put a word about this and she will be definitely, uh, we will loop in her uh, with this idea. It's her idea and definitely we will um, try to send it even to governor. There is, uh, we have some sources there also in the, in the north where uh, hopefully we will have a meeting and uh, they, they are actually, everybody is watching that what the society is doing. But Alhamdulillah, we are producing good results. So hopefully things will be good. Yusra, you want to say anything? Uh, th uh, thanks, Mariam. Uh, it's a great uh, initiative to think about the animals and the uh, ecotourism in Bahrain and um, coincidentally I was just speaking about the animals in Al Arin yesterday because we happened to go to the beach with some friends and uh, it was terribly hot and um, I was thinking at that time how are the animals surviving you know what's happening there and uh, now you come with your presentation um, I, I've been in Bahrain for over 30 years and I've never visited Hawar and I wonder why, you know, it's um, it's a shame that um, we don't market a great place that we have. And um, it's definitely an encouragement and an inspiration uh, uh, to have um, your idea implemented and having, uh, you know, the animals free um, and, um, and making it uh, gen uh, generating revenue for Bahrain and bringing in some more uh, tourists in a nice eco-friendly uh, atmosphere, you know. Um, I love um, uh, gardening and plantation. And uh, the more I hear from uh, Kai, you know, about planting trees all around Bahrain, you know, it brings the weather, uh, uh, you know, uh, it reduces the temperature. So definitely having uh, more greenery in Hawar and having it uh, more... Uh, welcoming and uh, friendly place for uh, people and definitely for animals and uh, getting people to know uh, much more about our culture here in Bahrain is a great initiative. Uh, hopefully uh, Kausar and the team can um, put uh, your uh, idea through to the government and uh, I'm sure you know th th they are embracing such uh, great ideas and there would be something happening. Thank you. Anybody wants else to say a few words? Please open your mic and- Hello. Uh, Hi, um, I'd like to thank you so much, Miriam. And I do believe that all what you presented is really good. And I hope that it really work in reality and we see those animals living freely on their own way no cages yeah we really hope to see this thank you thank you <laughs> uh, I, I would like to add something uh, as you know in africa they have national park they have you know different type of animals not uh, like we have here they have you know the wild animal which is the big uh, five big ones you know like uh, rhino and uh, 
hippo and uh, the elephant, whatever. And that's a very good idea. Uh, she showed us, you know, Mariam, we have a small mini. I've been to Tanzania for a week, you know, in safari, and I saw all these animals. And uh, you can hear, you know, the lion's uh, sound, you know, and uh, other animals as well. And it is a great idea to change, you know, this uh, uh, Hawar Islands into uh, small uh, oasis, okay, and to live, you know, to see the animals there living in a free uh, reserve, reservation, you know, without any uh, cages, what, uh, whatever, like, you know, Alarin Park. Alarin Park, they have uh, two types of uh, cages, open and open area and uh, closed area for the animals because they are hiding from, the, they have a shade like, you know, from protection from the sun and the open area to go around, you know. So uh, we need, you know, such uh, things, you know, and uh, move to uh, addressing, you know, these uh, uh, parts, you know, of the Ministry of uh, uh, this uh, Commerce and uh, uh, whatever and tourism as well. And the other uh, side, which is the municipalities, they govern, govern it because they are concerned about this as well. Thank you. Yes, so as uh, Nabila suggested that uh, simultaneously they can have two because when we have a lot of uh, tourists coming in, uh, definitely uh, there is uh, like they have a time factor and the distance so some can be taken there and some to the Alarine Park so that is really something very interesting <laughs> and uh, yes Nabila you want to say yeah yeah thank you thank you very mu uh, much uh, for the idea Mariam it's really great idea but you know it is very good idea for tourism but for bah local Bahrainis uh, some of them, they cannot afford to go to Al Hawar. That's mm -hmm. why it should be here and there. The idea of leaving them there, but in a way that they can be in open area or close up here, but not very close. They can be sometimes and out, but under cages, but you know, a big area, that big space they have. The idea is very good. I hope, mm -hmm. inshallah, they will do it. And uh, you have uh, the initiative for that, inshallah. Kausar will not leave that and she will reach it to higher people in the ministries. That's Thank right. you very much for the presentation. Thanks, Kausar. Yeah. Uh, so that is a thanking note to Mariam. And uh, yeah, we I, I was also, very Kausar, sorry, I want to mention future. also something. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah we'll discuss. Uh, let me just, uh, so we uh, wish you all the best in your future. And you are most welcome to join in at TIES whenever you have time, whatever you come into mind, please tell your friends because we want young generation to be part of this because future is for you. We as a pioneers, as Mr. Abdul Aziz said, that we are there as, a, as a elders, we will support you, but your ideas, your future planning is really great. Uh, so, yes, Ty, what do you want to say about ties more? Uh, no, no, I just want to mention again something uh, to Miriam because uh, when she mentioned as well with the agriculture and the, the, the possibilities, so uh, maybe to take your presentation uh, one step further, you can uh, create a kind of uh, slogan like maybe Bahrain National uh, Wildlife Reserve and Agricultural Park or something like this. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, that the people will have even a, a better understanding that it's about the, the agriculture and the animal li lifestyle. And I recall when they have got this, uh, I don't know, was it Mia uh, exhibition in, in Zahir when they brought all the animals to this area. And it was like a huge zoo with uh, chicken, horses, and I don't know what kind of animals there. So we showed already a kind of variety which is existing in Bahrain. Of course, not only the, the, the wildlife, but when it comes to uh, agriculture, of course, they can be uh, chicken, ducks, uh, goats, or something like this, where the people really can have uh, what we actually like in, in Germany. We like to do a two or three or, let's say, even one week vacation on, on a farm. 
you know, where we experience uh, the wildlife, the, 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 the pets, the chicken, the dogs, the cow, when they get milked and all this kind of stuff. So it could be uh, uh, more than a zoo, actually, or a wild drive reserve as well, a kind of uh, a ecotourism destination where the people really uh, maybe even participate in milking the cow, feeding the chicken, and this kind of stuff, you know, so learning about agriculture. So it's more like not a vacation, but more like a, a educational uh, 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 yeah, spare time. Well, that's a great idea. So about the ties, uh, thank you for this uh, meeting this month. And July, you know, uh, the 2021 is just run away. Uh, with all the up and downs, but Alhamdulillah, we are quite better off. Uh, stay is still whatever is required, the SOPs the government gave, whatever. I think the best way we all can fight this pandemic is to be listen and what is whatever is best naturally. They know better than us. So follow whatever is given the instruction. I know at times it's hard that when the yellow come or the orange come, green we are so happy but they must be they look forward for something and for that reason we have to be patient stay home but see zoom is always available so whenever you feel like talking we can arrange a meeting um, guy and myself nabila we are really working hard uh, behind the scene anyone wants to join because now we were thinking of going for the meeting but again it's sad that from first it will be